Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review we are looking at the Dragon Ball Z SH Figure Arts Vegito figure. You guys have been begging me to review this for a while now. I know it's been out for a while. I just didn't get a chance to pick it up yet. I finally have it. Uh, I do a lot of reviews guys, so sometimes it takes me a little while to get around to getting all of the figures that I want to get at the right time. So, you know, it happens sometimes. But here's the review. Here's the packaging. You guys like to see the packaging for the more collectible uh, packages. So here's Vegito's package. Window box, standard DBZ look with the pixelated dot matrix on the side. Looks really cool. Blue and orange. Posed on the side. Non-Super Saiyan. And then we get some posing options on the back, which is normal. So there's that. Let's look at the figure. He stands roughly six and a half inches tall, which is... About 16 and a half, 17 centimeters tall. And a lot of people are probably wondering how much of this guy is actually Goku in terms of the mold. And the answer is almost all of it. Of course, he has new faces and head. Uh, he has new forearms, some new hands. And then most people probably don't realize this, but these boots, it's not all one mold. I didn't realize it at first, but you can see there's a seam in there. It looks like maybe it was just sculpted like that, but it's not. They're separate. So all I did was unplug the boots and give him new boots, which is fine. I mean, that's good, obviously. So he has new forearms and new boots and a new head. Everything else is the exact same mold, which is what I'm anticipating for Gohan, which, you know... Obviously, it's a nice mold. I personally, especially for Gohan, I wouldn't mind a new mold. Especially Gohan, since he should be, I think, a little bit thinner. Plus, this mold's looking a little bit dated compared to most of the new ones coming out. Especially these shoulders. We need to get rid of those, Bandai. Let's get some new shoulders. Let's get some new molds. Uh, let's stop reusing this one. Especially if they reuse this for anybody else. That's just too many. Like Yamcha, maybe, if we ever get a Yamcha. Anyway, it still looks pretty good. A uh, couple of key things to point out. Um, this guy, I believe he's the first of the Saiyans that has the hair sculpted like this with these extra ridges and crevices in there. I believe, of course Trunks had a different type of hair, but they've all had this rather blocky look before, which I'm pretty fond of. I like it. However, it's not 100% accurate. This one is far more accurate, especially for Super Saiyan. If you go back and look at the anime, I'm not sure about the manga. These lines, you can't really see them in the black because everything's black, but in the Super Saiyan hair, those lines are accurate. And at first, I, did, I thought they looked a little odd, but it's really growing on me. I think they look really good now. And they are more accurate, so definitely happy about that. So we do have the two Super Saiyan hairs, so let's talk about accessories now. Are they the same sculpt? It sure looks like it to me. I believe they are identical. One is molded in black, one is molded in yellow. This yellow is a little pale and there's no paint on it. I'm not sure if they planned on painting it and decided not to or what. I don't remember from the prototype. I think it would look good if it had a little bit of shading. Nothing, nothing anywhere near this candy corn hair. Which I think is okay for a really comic-y look or anime look, so to speak. But this does look a little bit pale. Not bad, and I'll show you on the other faces also in some photos at the end. But I do like this new hair sculpt. Other accessories include folded arms. So that's a new, that's a first for Goku, or this mold anyway. I'm happy about that. I'll show you these in the photos at the end. Basically the same as Piccolo's or who else had them? Cell, Frieza, Vegeta. I don't know, a bunch of people had folded arms, so these look pretty good. There is some shading in the gloves, and uh, there's shading throughout all of the skin, so that's pretty nice. Hopefully you get a good one where the shading in the neck doesn't look too dark against the face. That tends to be an issue they've had with some of these figures, and my other one of these guys does have a really dark neck. So we mentioned the shading in the gloves here. So we have white gloves with kind of like a teal, greenish blue shading. The gloves here on the forearm have the shading on them. Hopefully you can see that. A little bit of shading there. No shading on the hands. And that is carried throughout all of the other accessory hands. So I'll show you these now. We have the two fist hands on the figure. We have the two open palm hands. No shading on them at all. So that's pretty disappointing considering like the original Vegeta had the shading. I think the Scouter Vegeta had the shading. This guy doesn't. And here's another thing that really grinds my gears. These hands are not molded in white gloved hands. These are regular Goku hands that are painted white. And I know this 
because you can even see the skin colored plastic on the inside. These hands, all white plastic. 100% white plastic. Looks really nice. These hands, off white paint on top of skin colored plastic with fingernails. Not good. Not really acceptable. They should have not done that. This is really bad. I don't like that at all. Plus the paint's not good. You can see the little chunks missing. So that's pretty disappointing. I did not expect that in the Dragon Ball line. So far I haven't really been disappointed and that's it's a bit of a bummer. Alright, so let's look at the faces. So we have three Super Saiyan and two regular faces. So the two regular ones, standard face like that, and then we have the yelling to the side face. Which, they did a great job with the mouth, by the way. The earrings look pretty good on all of them also. Uh, unique thing for this guy, and I think he's a first. Maybe Trunks had the same issue? I'm not sure. Uh, the eyes are not sculpted. They're flat. It's simply a paint application or a decal, whatever you want to call it. I believe everyone else has had sculpted eyes. Now this Goku's face isn't actually one of the better examples, but it shows you that the eyes are sculpted. Now these are not, and it does give it a different look. Some people are saying the faces look off. I don't think they technically do look off. I think they're pretty accurate. But having no sculpt work like around the ridges or around the edges of the eyes to give them like an eyelid or anything, I think that's what's throwing people off. I'm personally okay with it. It's just something you have to get used to. I think once you pose him, it shouldn't be a problem. But they do look different for sure, not having the sculpt work, especially from the profile when you can see where it normally would have some sculpting in there. It looks a little bit different than we're used to, so that's going to take some take some getting used to. Okay, let's look at the Super Saiyan faces. I'll show you how to swap them out, and it's the same for both heads again. You just pull the hair off to the front. It might be a little sticky the first time and not actually sticky, just stuck. Put the faces on. Same thing for both hairs again. And then you just push the hair back in. And it might look like it's not sitting flush. That's just because you didn't push it in all the way. I'm not going to worry about it right now. So one of our Super Saiyan faces has him looking off to the side. Kind of a smirk in his mouth. Now this, the Super Saiyan faces, it looks like the eyes are too high up for me. Maybe it's just me. I don't think so though. I think they're too high up on the face. You can see here there's a pretty big distance between the nose and the eyes. They look okay otherwise, but they definitely, something's off about the Super Saiyan eyes. And then we also have the yelling straightforward Super Saiyan face. That one doesn't look as bad. Looks like things are lined up a little better. And this one, kind of just a standard stern look. Again, not as bad, but something seems off about the Super Saiyan faces. I don't know, you guys can let me know what you think about those. Doesn't look bad, but something's just not quite right. And then our last accessory is this blast effect, or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure if this one has a particular name. I don't know every single DBZ move. Uh, but it looks pretty cool. It is a different type of accessory based on what we've seen in the past. It's not that kind of semi-soft, not really soft, but that translucent plastic that we're used to. This is all hard plastic. So you can see some of the, uh, I guess you would call it engineering inside, where the pieces are glued together and connected. It takes a little bit of the effect away, no pun intended. Also, there's no shading. I'm not sure if they did this because it's cheaper this way or what, but it, it doesn't really look as good as, say, like the fire or that water effect that Bandai put out not that long ago. That type of plastic with that type of painting on it looks way better than this. This will do, and it's not bad at all, but it definitely could be better, I think. And the way this works is this hand just slides right in there, and then he can do that. And there is a peg hole for the stage if you have stages to use. doesn't come with one, though. Unless I'm losing my mind. I don't think he does. No, he doesn't come with a stage. Alright, so that's how that works. Let's go through the articulation, even though you guys have all seen this articulation a few times by now, if you've seen any of my DBZ reviews. I'll pop the head off so you can see the neck. We have a, technically it's a ball peg, but it's really just a straight peg for a swivel at the bottom. We have a hinge here, and then a ball peg to connect it to the head. And then the neck is on a ball peg also, even though you don't get that much range of motion. You can get some, so posing shouldn't really be a problem. Pop that on there, and you can pretty much have them look wherever you want. For the shoulders, we have a ball peg that connects to the torso with just that little cup, that flesh-colored cup, floating around it just to hide the articulation. So big ball peg in there. Ball hinge for the shoulder that allows this range of motion here. 
ball peg connects the shirt sleeve to the shoulder so you can move that with it and it kind of fills in the gaps. We get our bicep swivel right here. Doesn't really connect the way I would like it to since they had to make his arms come off for the um, crossed arms effect. They don't seem to want to go back on all the way. There's a little bit of a gap there. QC, not that great again. Kind of disappointed by that. We technically have a double jointed elbow. You're going to get almost all of your articulation out of this second joint, the lower joint. The top one will move probably. There you go. It moves a little bit. You can see that. Not a whole lot, but I think we get good enough range of motion out of it. Then for the wrists, standard wrists for these guys, it's a ball hinge with a ball peg for the hand and then a peg that lets it swivel around in the forearm. So that's pretty normal. We have a double ball peg. Well, it's technically not, but... Essentially, it's a, well, let's just call it a single ball peg that does expand a little bit. It pops in and out so you can get better posability out of it. He can lean really far forward once you extend it, pretty far back, side to side, does rotate, and then you can pop it back down, and you get far less range of motion, but it looks good. The belt is a separate piece, just like always. Uh, for the hips, we have those hinged ball pegs, so you can drop them down, and then you can pose them pretty much however you want to. Again, though, uh, the hips are okay, but as we move down to the knees, this figure does still show its age. The knees are still fairly ugly. We get this kind of weird double hinge where it's just kind of blocky and odd looking from the front especially. And I don't remember it being such an issue, and we'll look at the Goku as we uh, go on here. But the lower legs really bump up against these upper legs a lot, especially on this side. You can see here... I can almost not use the joint. I have to really force it. So that's a little strange. I, I think we really need to get a new mold going and stop using this one. And then for the ankles, we have a double ball peg. They move pretty well side to side for the ankle rocker, so that's good. Not so far forward and back, but it's not horrible. And we do get a toe joint, so that's good. And we do get those sculpted toes that people have wanted, so that's pretty good also. Let's really quick take a look at Goku's knees. They, uh, I guess Goku's knees did bump. So, yeah, we just need to replace this mold with something a little bit more updated. So there it is. I will post some photos here at the end so you can see him in action. It's a decent figure. It's just, at this point, they're releasing so many awesome DBZ figures like Broly and 16 and all these other guys that this one, it just really shows its age. I, I don't know. I wish it was better. It's still good. Just don't expect it to be awesome, you know? I mean, if you're a DBZ fanboy, then obviously it's going to be awesome. But if you just like DBZ, this figure's going to show its age, you know? It's not going to feel like a Broly or a 16. It's going to feel like a Goku with a new head for the most part. Still a good figure, just not really exceptional. Also, forgot to mention the orange paint around the, uh, well, for the shirt. Not the best. It's kind of sloppy in the seams. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little bit of bleeding and it's really fuzzy. Same thing back here. Just doesn't look that great. I don't know. Hopefully these come in figures, the ones that are coming out soon, like uh, the new God, God Goku and Vegeta and Gohan and Boo and all these other guys. Hopefully they are in line with 16 and Broly rather than this guy. Still a good figure again. Uh, it is in stock at BBTS, so check out that link in the description below if you want to grab one. They will, I'm sure, sell out. And then once they do, good luck trying to get them for a reasonable price. So grab one while you can. Uh, I do recommend it, just don't expect it to be on par with the newer figures. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.